right friends welcome back to facts and figures for third week and let us look at the events of the week donald trump officially sworn in as the 45th president of united states of america and here the oath is administered by the chief justice john roberts that is one important point and second thing is the inauguration ceremony that is the 45th presidency inauguration ceremony took place outside us capital in washington dc and remaining things with regard to various aspects we will discuss during the editorial discussion on monday then the next point is natarajan chandrasekharan he was appointed as the chairperson of tata sons and natarajan chandrasekharan from tamil nadu at present he is ceo and managing director of tcs and if you look at the chairpersons of tata sons during the past 149 years of history tata family were the chairpersons for almost 139 years and only two occasions that is saklatwala in 1932 to 1938 and cyrus mystery from 2012 to 2016 except these two instances and balance 139 years of period the chairmanship was with tata family and now natarajan chandrasekharan is going to be the third person from outside the tata family and natarajan chandrasekharan is from tamil nadu he is alumnus of at present national institute of technology tiruchinappalli and and in those days rec tiruchinappalli and if you look at the next point rajesh gopinathan another alumnus from rec tiruchinappalli or nit tiruchinappalli is going to become the new ceo and md of tata consultancy services in place of chandrasekharan who became the head of tata sons and next news sarita devi is going to become india's first female professional boxer you may have a doubt the difference between professional boxing and amateur boxing professional boxing is almost lifetime career and the shows will go on for more length of time and that is different from amateur boxing and sometimes injuries may also take place for professional boxers and sarita devi from manipur became the first indian female professional boxer right so please don't forget sarita devi is from manipur look at the next one city bank india introduced voice biometrics authentication system here what is the meaning of voice biometrics authentication system here voice will be used for authentication instead of pin numbers instead of pin numbers voice will be used for authentication so voice will become your password so city bank recently started in india also look into the next one pr srijesh became a member of fih athletics committee here two three points i would like to tell you what is the purpose of fih athletics committee fih athletics committee will act as interface between players and fih in decision making so it will act as interface between players as well as fih in making decisions second point is where are the headquarters of fih fih is headquartered in lausanne switzerland these things don't forget and another important aspect is recently narinder batra became the president of hockey india and he is not only the first indian but also the first non european president of international hockey federation so these things don't forget and at the same time don't forget about the pr srijesh look at the next news item daniel ortega has sworn in as the president of nicaragua for the third time and it is the largest country in the central american isthmus 
and please look into this. This is Nicaragua. This is a Central American country and here one word is used isthmus. Isthmus, what is the meaning of isthmus? Isthmus is a narrow landmass, narrow landmass which connects two bigger landmasses. Narrow landmass which connects two bigger landmasses. So, this is isthmus. So, you can say this area is known as isthmus. It is a narrow land which is connecting to bigger masses. And at the same time, all of you should not forget about strait. Strait means narrow water body which connects to large water bodies. All of you are familiar with Strait of Hormuz. Strait of Hormuz connects Persian Gulf with Gulf of Oman and subsequently Arabian Sea. So, you should have clear idea about what is Isthmus, what is the Strait. Strait of Hormuz is one important strait where substantial portion of oil crosses from one water body to another water body, right. So, Gulf oil passes through this Strait of Hormuz, please do not forget. So, when someone talks about the Strait, someone talks about isthmus, you should have clear idea. Then the next one is SpaceX. SpaceX is the space firm. This is a private space firm of United States of America, based in United States of America. And Elon Musk, he is behind this SpaceX program. And recently, it launched Falcon 9 rocket. What is so special about Falcon 9 rocket? The speciality is the first stage of the rocket is reusable. We are talking about reusable rockets to reduce the cost of satellite launch. And here Falcon 9 rocket experiment is basically the reusage of the first stage of the rocket. So, these things please do not forget. If someone talks about the Falcon 9, someone talks about the SpaceX, these are based in United States of America. Please do not forget. The next one is for the first time Gujarat has clinched India's premier Ranji Trophy title and they defeated the mighty Mumbai who won the title for 41 times. And Gujarat captain is Parthiv Patel, he scored 143 and Gujarat was playing their final after 66 years. And another important point I would like to tell you, when you look at the domestic cricket tournaments, Ranji Trophy is the domestic cricket tournament in the format of test. In test format, it is a domestic cricket tournament. And in 50 over format, there is another trophy which is Vijay Hazare trophy. And another format is there for domestic cricket that is 2020 format. And Syed Mustaq Ali trophy is basically for 2020 format. So, these things do not forget. 69th Army Day was observed on January 15th. And on this day in 1949, K. M. Kariyappa became India's first commander in chief. In 1949, on January 15th, K. M. Kariyappa became the first Indian commander in chief. He took over from the last British commander in chief. He is Sir Francis Butcher. Right? So, to commemorate this occasion, we celebrate Army Day on January 15th. Please look into this picture. Field Marshal K. M. Kariyappa. Look into the next one. Name the state government which launched mobile application Pinakin. This mobile application Pinakin is launched by Tamil Nadu. And two things I would like to tell you. This was launched in two languages, Tamil and English. And at the same time, it gives famous tourist destinations information in the state. Look into the next one. Border Security Force launched Operation Sard Hawa. Normally what happens? In foggy conditions, infiltration of terrorists takes place and Border Security Force basically protects our borders, our Pakistani border. Please look into this. We have 
3,323 kilometers of border with Pakistan, including line of control. And this border is a protected by border security force. And this Operation Sardhava was launched basically to prevent infiltration of terrorists from Pakistani land in the times of a fog. Right, friends, look at the next one. Name the state government which launched Digital Dakya. Digital Dakya is launched by Madhya Pradesh and here basically to promote digital transactions, to encourage cashless transactions. Here training will be given by visiting door to door. Especially women and elderly people will be trained about digitized transactions and this was launched by Madhya Pradesh state government. Look at the next one. Printing press in Mysore has created a new record by printing the highest number of currency notes in December 2016. And please don't forget the two printing presses, Salboni in West Bengal, Mysore in Karnataka. These two are under Bharati Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited and two more printing presses. The two printing presses at Devas and Nasik are under the Finance Ministry. So, this distinction please be clear. And another important point is this Bharati Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited is completely owned by Reserve Bank of India. Look at the next one. Name the bank which is signed an agreement with the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Oman. You may ask what is meant by Sovereign Wealth Fund. Sovereign Wealth Funds are maintained by rich countries which have budget surplus, normally oil rich countries and some other countries like Norway, they have this Sovereign Wealth Funds. They create that fund and subsequently they invest those funds wherever profits are expected. So, sovereign wealth funds is basically the trait of developed countries. That one important point you should not miss. And here State General Reserve Fund and State Bank of India. This is State General Reserve Fund. This is a sovereign wealth fund of Oman along with the State Bank of India. They signed an agreement to create a 200 million dollar Oman India Joint Investment Fund. Oman India Joint Investment Fund will be created 200 million dollars, 150 million dollars will be contributed by SGRF, 50 million dollars by State Bank of India. Right, let us go ahead. Oman, this is the country and look at the next one. Rishi Kapoor's autobiography, the name of the autobiography is Kullam Kulla Rishi Kapoor Uncensored. This was released and this is written by Rishi Kapoor himself along with Meena Ayer. This was released recently. Look at the next one. Former Punjab Chief Minister Surjit Singh Barnala passed away at the age of 91 and he was Chief Minister during 1980s in the height of Punjab terrorist problem. Right. And he became the chief minister after Rajiv Langowal accord in 1985. Look into the next one. 62nd Geo Film Fair Awards were awarded in Mumbai, Maharashtra. And here the best film is Dangal and best actor Amir Khan, best actress Aliya Bhatt for Urta Punjab and best director Nitesh Tiwari for Dangal. Then one important award is Lifetime Achievement Award was given to Setru Ghan Sinha. Look at the next one. Bharti Enterprises launched Airtel Payments Bank through its nationwide operations. Two, three things I would like to tell you. Payment banks are called either NIC banks or differentiated banks. Second important point is this Airtel Payments Bank became the first in the country to launch its operations in payments bank category. Third point is it launched its operations from Rajasthan. Now it extended to all the 29 states. Fourth point is it is the bank offering the highest interest for savings account deposits 7.25%. Then fifth point is it had a tie up with Kotak Mahindra Bank Limited in payment banks. The existing universal banks can have 
शेयर होल्डिंग अप टू ये मैक्सिमम ऑफ थर्टी परसेंट एंड नाउ कोटक महिंद्रा बैंक विल हैव ट्वेंटी परसेंट शेयर होल्डिंग विथ भारती एयरटेल पेमेंट्स बैंक राइट सो दीज थिंग्स डोंट फॉरगेट नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज India signed memorandum of understanding with the Sri Lanka to support the people in the terrorism affected Jaffna region and now India is supporting the people in Jaffna region right and India signed memorandum of understanding to construct 3000 rainwater harvesting systems at a cost of rupees 30 crore so if someone talks about this that is Sri Lanka don't forget India's richest one percent. This is uh, alarming. India's richest one percent now holds fifty-eight percent of the country's global wealth. India's richest one percent, richest one percent is holding fifty-eight percent of country's wealth. That is uh, clearly indication. that the rich poor gap is increasing and another interesting point you see at the global level at the global level the richness of top 8 billionaires if you take the wealth of top 8 billionaires across the world that is equal to the wealth of the poorest 50% of world population so eight people wealth the wealth of eight people is equal to the wealth of eight people is equal to the wealth of the bottom 350 crore people and another point is 57 billionaires in india have the same wealth as that of bottom 70% of the population of the country so only 57 billionaires in our country hold total wealth of 70% of the population or you can say 57 people are holding the wealth equivalent to the wealth of around 85 crore population this shows rich poor gap prevalent across the world not only across the world but also in india that's why more and more protectionistic tendencies are coming up across the world right so this is as per oxfam report and if you look at india mukesh ambani as usual is the richest person followed by dilip shanghvi he belongs to sun pharmaceuticals group then azim prem ji all of you are familiar with the wipro look at the next one world's largest cricket stadium is coming up at a place ahmedabad that is motera place called motera at present we have cricket stadium motera stadium in ahmedabad and this stadium with 1.1 lakh spectators capacity once it is constructed will become the largest in terms of seating capacity in the world at present melbourne cricket ground in australia is the world's largest cricket stadium with a capacity of around 1 lakh but in future this cricket ground in ahmedabad will be the world's largest cricket stadium corpus of cgt mse two things i would like to tell you cgt mse is credit guarantee fund trust for micro and small enterprises this credit guarantee fund trust for micro and small enterprises works under cdb that is one part second important aspect is it basically gives credit guarantee it gives credit guarantee to micro and small enterprises because micro and small enterprises may not be in a position to give collateral security that's why cgt mse gives collateral security to micro and small enterprises and two three important points i would like to tell you the credit guarantee will extend not only to the loans to micro small enterprises issued by the banks but also issued by nbfcs also previously this credit guarantee facility was eligible only for the loans given to micro small enterprises by the banks but now the credit guarantee is extended 
to the loans given by NBFCs also. Then another point is the credit guarantee is increased from rupees 1 crore to rupees 2 crore. These things are very very important from examination perspective. NASA approved a mission to explore 16 psych, a iron rich asteroid. So, it will be launched in 2023. NASA is going to launch a mission to explore asteroid 16 psych. And all of you are familiar with the asteroid belt. When you look at the solar system, two things please do not forget. One is asteroid belt, the other one is Kuiper belt. Asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter. So, in asteroid belt, NASA will launch a mission to explore 16 psych asteroid because asteroids are considered to be having substantial mineral wealth. So, please do not forget asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter and Kuiper belt. Kuiper belt is beyond Neptune. So, beyond Neptune, this is the eighth planet in the solar system. Solar system has got eight planets. So, beyond Neptune, that is the Kuiper belt. So, these two belts, please do not forget. So, let us come back to the question. This is 16 psych is basically asteroid and NASA will launch a mission in 2023 to explore asteroid. Union cabinet given its approval for India to take up full membership of International Vaccine Institute Governing Council. Where is this International Vaccine Institute? This is Seoul, South Korea headquarters. And another important point is what is the purpose of International Vaccine Institute? The purpose is this is basically for developing and introducing new and improved vaccines for developing and introducing new and improved vaccines, this international non-profit organization is launched. And now India will become the member of this governing council of International Vaccine Institute. And please do not forget this International Vaccine Institute is basically established on the initiative of UNDP in 1997. Look at the next one. Union government launched dedicated web portal Shagan. This is Shagan portal basically will track quality of education of Sarva Siksha Abhiyan. Sarva Siksha Abhiyan, I would like to tell you two points. Sarva Siksha Abhiyan is basically totally funded by central government. Second important aspect is it provides universal access to education to children in the age group of 6 to 14 years. So, the mission of Sarva Seksha Abhiyan is to provide universal access to education for children in the age group of 6 to 14 years of age. Madhya Pradesh government launched Anandam scheme to help poor and here basically in each district the economically sound citizens can donate items for the needy persons under this program. This program is Anandam and this is launched by Madhya Pradesh government. Alok Kumar Verma became the new CBI director and Alok Kumar Verma is at present Delhi's police commissioner that is one thing and he will be for two years tenure and CBI director is appointed based on the high level committee decision high level committee is headed by the prime minister high level committee comprising of prime minister chief justice of the country and leader of the largest opposition party in lok sabha so the committee decides about the appointment to cbi director so this is the news and with this let us conclude the facts and figures for Third week, please do join for other modules, capsules as well as newspaper editorial discussions. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks a lot.